It's now public and it's good news. American forces, military, FBI, and others captured one of their ringleaders, if not the ringleader, of the Benghazi attacks. It killed four Americans, including our ambassador. Tonight on Central Coast News, what happens now to that alleged mastermind of those attacks captured by U.S. forces? Plus, an arrest and last night's shooting death of a 15-year-old right across the street from the Santa Cruz police station. The suspect's connection to the gang lifestyle and whether that had anything to do with this shooting. And strawberries never looked so good. Monterey County is breaking records with its 2013 crop report, what that means for the local economy. Your Central Coast News starts right now. Now in high definition, Central Coast News right now. A 16-year-old arrested and charged with involuntary manslaughter after a 15-year-old is found dead at an apartment complex right across the street from the Santa Cruz Police Station. Good evening, I'm Spencer Washburn. And I'm Jasmine Veal. Santa Cruz Police said they tried everything they could to save the boy. Central Coast News reporter Ricardo Navarro is live in Santa Cruz with how the gun even got in the home in the first place. Well, guys, uh, police say that at least six people were inside that apartment when the shooting happened. They say irresponsible care of a firearm unnecessarily took the life of that 15-year-old teen. Officers responded to reports of a shooting at this apartment on Center Street just before 7 Monday night. They actually attempted life-saving measures on the victim, which included CPR, compression to the wound. Santa Cruz police were unsuccessful, and the 15-year-old Watsonville teen died on scene. Deputy Chief Steve Clark said when officers began investigating the scene, they found the gun outside, which was reported stolen in May. Then they interviewed everyone who was inside that apartment. Who was where and what were the individual roles inside that apartment leading up to this shooting? Police say they determined that a 16-year-old Santa Cruz Norteño gang member was the shooter. He was booked into juvenile hall with one count of involuntary manslaughter. There was some negligence that led to this shooting. Although it was unintentional, the shooting was not accidental. There was some definite behaviors that occurred prior to the shooting that led to the firearm being out in the room, being in a position where it could be fired and eventually fired at the victim. Police are now looking into how the gun got to the home and say this is the danger when young gang members believe they can handle a firearm. This is a group of kids who were playing around with firearm or, or had it there in some context and being irresponsible with it. And it's, it's unfortunate and it's tragic. Now, police say it was actually a neighbor who reported the shooting. They heard the gunshot, and then they heard several people in the apartment crying. Now, police say the victim was not in a gang, but he did associate with some gang members and that he was visiting Santa Cruz, that apartment at that time. Live in Santa Cruz, Ricardo Navarro, your Central Coast News. Well, this information just coming into our newsroom, a bill to put warning labels on sugary drinks authored by our very own local senator, Bill Monning, failed to pass the Assembly Committee on Health today. Senator Monning says he will continue to push, though, for this education on health risk from these sugary drinks. Salinas police officers were called out to Cherokee Drive last night after reports of a shooting there. It turns out the 16-year-old victim wasn't shot but was hit in the eye with a gun. He and another person were in a garage on the 1700 block of Cherokee when two men wearing hoods came in looking for something. One of the suspects fired a gun randomly in the neighborhood as they were running away, hitting a car and a home. Both suspects got away. Santa Cruz police are once again asking you to be on the lookout for several suspected thieves. They were caught on camera breaking the law. Check it out. First up is this man. Police say he broke into a parked car back in May, taking several items, including credit cards. He used those cards at 10 stores like Ross, CVS, and Woodstock's Pizza. This man in red smashed a car window to grab a wallet. He used those cards at Valero, Home Depot, and Target. The man in blue helped spend some of the money. Then just last week, this man walked into Walgreens with empty bags and started filling them up with merchandise. He took several hoodies and t-shirts as well as socks. 
If you recognize any of these men, call Santa Cruz Police. Right now, the Salina City Council meeting is underway, and they're taking a look at economic development in the city. One of their focuses, ag tech. City leaders are hoping a new plan will attract Silicon Valley businesses to the Salinas Valley, with them bringing jobs and opportunity for growth, hoping to make Salinas the ag tech capital in the U.S. So we've been trying to push that initiative forward, so to speak, and attract some of those businesses that are now coming from the Silicon Valley because they have investments, they have the ability to look at agriculture on that scale. The Salinas Valley Chamber of Commerce says local businesses also stand to benefit if we have a local tech boom. And City Council wants your input on the economic development strategy for the city. Council wants to know what strategies you think should be used to overcome economic challenges. An update to action plan so far is also being provided. That meeting happening now in the City Council Chambers. Monterey County is breaking records with its 2013 crop report. This just a week after Santa Cruz County reported positive numbers as well. But this report comes comes before it comes before the time that the state was then pulled deeper into this drought crisis. Of course, Norm Hoffman standing by to let us know if there is a light at the end of the tunnel for these growers. And now Michelle Polito in the newsroom with more, though, on today's report. Michelle. Well, Jazz, for the fourth time in five years, the ag industry in Monterey County brought in the big bucks, passing the $4 billion mark in crop value. Now this year, strawberries took the lead, hitting an all-time record of $869 million. That's about an $85 million difference compared to the 2012 crop report. Leaf lettuce, head lettuce, broccoli, and wine grapes were part of the top 10 crops that brought in more than $100 million each. Monterey County's Agricultural Commissioner says this year's report reflects the commitment of our Central Coast growers, but also went on to say that Mother Nature played a huge role on these numbers. Supplies that are down in other areas of the country or in the case of Canada, you see their production goes down and then the demands on, on the West Coast come back. As for 2014, local growers say their season started early and continue to see production that's fairly typical for this time of year. And because of the dry conditions on the Central Coast, growers have been very careful on how many acres they plant, making sure they don't have excess product. Now, what's also becoming more popular is the use of drip irrigation, which really concentrates that water right around the root zone of the crop. Michelle Polito in the newsroom, your Central Coast News. All right, thanks, Michelle. We do want to now check in with our chief meteorologist Norm Hoffman because Norm as we mentioned these positive numbers are from 2013 and this year we've been experiencing some pretty severe drought conditions so could this continue into 2015? Well we're looking at the possibility that that could continue we're talking about El Nino I want to show you a graphic take a look at this I'm going to get just a bit technical at this moment as I do we are looking at the ocean temperatures across the tropics. We are looking at the depth of three to 400 feet. This is the side of the ocean that we're on, South America, and this is the side of the ocean of Indonesia. The temperatures you see here are above normal and they're working their way toward the surface. The interesting fact here, earlier everybody was talking about how big this El Nino was gonna be, but most of the warm temperatures now are headed up. Watch them, they're working their way towards South America. And that means it looks like this will be more of an Eastern Pacific event. We're not seeing warmer temperatures in the mid Pacific. Remember, this is the surface, this is 400 feet down, and these are temperatures that are working toward the, the ocean. Now take a look at the graphic. The important fact is that El Nino warms the water over the eastern Pacific and out over the central Pacific. If it only warms in the eastern Pacific, then the southeast U.S. is most likely to get more rainfall. So if this is going to be an eastern Pacific event, then it will be more rain in the southeast U.S. If it warms out here, which right now it doesn't look like it's going to, but if it does, then it becomes more of a southwest U.S. event. So we're still looking at it, and that's why NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, continues to say we're not sure how strong this is going to be, so we'll keep you posted. All right, thank you, Norman. You can learn much more about California's historic drought on our website. That's KIONRightNow.com. Click on CA Drought under the News tab. The mother of teenager Audrey Pott is calling on lawmakers to pass a bill called Audrey's Law through the Assembly Public Safety Committee. Audrey was a 15-year-old girl who attended Saratoga High School up in the Bay Area. 
She was sexually assaulted while unconscious at a house party in 2012. She later committed suicide. The bill would require mandatory sentences of two years for minors who sexually abuse people who are unconscious or disabled. The public wants this legislation. They want this loophole in the law to be closed. Many of them have even said they want a longer sentence. But we feel that this is the step that we need to make in the right direction to protect other young men and women and to protect the victims and not the criminals. The three teens accused of raping Audrey were sentenced to 30 to 45 days. We've told you on Central Coast News before about an effort to save Toro Park. Well, now a petition has been started online to try to prevent new facilities from being added there. Plan is to build three softball fields and areas for youth soccer and football for kids that don't have a place to practice right now. The project is in the preliminary stages with traffic and safety studies. The county has not approved it yet. Now, a change.org petition has been started aimed at getting the Board of Supervisors for Monterey County to stop this renovation. The petition already has more than 1,800 signatures. Some positive local news now, and a celebrity teacher here on the Central Coast, a local middle school teacher, one of 90, nominated for People Magazine's All-Star Teacher Campaign. Robin Kunish is a sixth grade teacher at Gavilan View Middle School in Salinas, and she needs your vote. Yeah. Kunish is one of three finalists who will represent the San Francisco Giants at the 2014 All-Star Game in July. She was surprised to learn one of her colleagues nominated her for this national campaign called Target Presents People's All-Star Teachers. Well, it recognizes current or retired teachers who make an impact in their community. Here's what she said about winning the whole thing. First, I would be shocked because this is just what I do and it's kind of what I am too. I'm very proud of being a teacher and if I win, to me, it'd be, it'd be hilarious. Let's help her win. If she is voted to represent the Giants, she will then be one of the 30 to possibly be featured in People Magazine. You can vote for Robin through June 29th. That is next Sunday. We're going to put all this information online, KIONRightNow.com. Click on the sports tab on the home page. Yeah, that's a great one. So share your positive local news stories with us as well. Use that hashtag on Facebook and Twitter. And you can always send us an email at newstips at KIONRightNow.com. Twin tornadoes slam a small Nebraska town, destroying almost everything in their path. Plus, how farmers are changing the way they run the farm. But are the cows liking it? This wave of new technology. This is Central Coast News, now in high definition. Wake up with Megan Monroe. My choice is Ford F-150. 24-7, 365. Truck buyers in California depend on F-Series pickups. With comfort and sophistication on the inside. And a beast under the hood. You'll love F-150's power and capability. Equip yours with available EcoBoost and get impressive power and performance. I did my research and I made the right choice. Buy your new F-150 now and get total savings up to $8,000 at your California Ford dealer. My name's Ron Garnett. I'm a crew foreman here at Monterey. It's a small town, good place to raise children. Here in the Monterey area, we try to minimize outages by doing maintenance. We want to get there and fix it so that nobody's out of power. There's emergencies, and there's times you come to work here, and you don't get home for a day or so. You're making a conscious effort to leave your family to go to work to help somebody else. And that's why we do the things we do is for reliability. We're pg and &E. My husband and my daughter don't treat me like a person that's in a wheelchair. They want me to, as much as possible, be able to do things with them. Movies, shopping. My husband took us to the Fisherman's Wharf, and we spent the whole day over there. It means the world to me to be able to travel with my family, being able to do certain things that other people can't do for themselves. Just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean anything to anybody. Do whatever you need to do and be a part of our community and go out there just like I do. The drought has caused extremely dry conditions, leading to increased wildfire activity across the state. Dry grass and brush can be ignited while using equipment to clear defensible space. Don't do the right thing the wrong way. Powered equipment like weed trimmers or lawnmowers like this can easily spark a wildfire, putting lives and property at risk. Remember, mow and use powered equipment before 10 a.m. and never on hot or windy days. 
One less spark means one less wildfire. Learn more from CAL FIRE at readyforwildfire.org. What a day it turned out to be as we check back in with our chief meteorologist, Norm Hoffman. I mean, yeah, you were just speaking moments ago, of course, about the severe drought California is in, mm -hmm. but pretty nice out there with the sun. Yeah, a nice yeah. day. It was breezy down the valley. We had gusts of 33 miles an hour in wow. King City, wow. so it was blowing again down the valley, but not too bad elsewhere. Take a look. This is the live eye. We're looking over toward uh, Monterey and Sand City. We're atop Domenico's restaurant on the wharf in Monterey, and a uh, pretty nice day out there. 60s, uh, mid-60s to low 70s around the coast. Take a look at the time lapse. Of course, no clouds here, but very uh, a little bit of haze down at the lower elevation. Some moisture left over from the low clouds on the south side of the bay this morning. Again, we're atop Domenico's restaurant on the wharf in Monterey. 66 and 68 degrees around the peninsula today. Pretty nice all the way around. 81. Uh, Santa Cruz, Monterey, 68. Salinas, 69. Gilroy, 6, 83. Back up to near normal. Close. 77 in Hollister and King City, 79. So we did warm back up again today. 67. Salinas and Monterey, Watsonville, 71. Clear skies out there this evening. I hope you had a nice day. It was beautiful. Mostly clear tonight. Patsy clouds at the coast later. I'll show you those. Lots of sunshine and a little bit warmer on Wednesday. We will have a little change into Thursday then. We're going to cool back down again, and the marine layer comes back. Low pressure center right here in eastern Oregon and Washington over Idaho, basically. The ridge is starting to nose in here. As it does, it pushes in and works its way in over the state tomorrow. Only a day or so, and then that's going to transit on out. We will still have some northwest winds along the coast, but there are no small craft advisories at the present time. And expect 20 to 25 miles per hour down the valley, but it will still be a little bit warmer. Clear skies, a few radar echoes in northeast California, right at the end of the loop and over northern Nevada as the next wave pushes south. But the stratus is cleared mostly from the coast, and Futurecast look at just a little bit. Watch it start to form right around the south side of the bay by midnight, 1 o'clock, and then by early morning, it starts to develop along the coast again. The cool air cools and develops, but mostly we stay clear all the way through midday tomorrow. Some highs, Felton 85, Santa Cruz 76, Aptos 75, Watsonville 74, Gilroy 88, that's normal. Hollister 82, that's back up near normal as well. Monterey 68, Big Sur 78, 74, Salinas 70, Soledad 76, 81, King City and Bradley, the warm spot, 90 degrees. Your week ahead forecast will take you out the next seven days. As we go, temperatures uh, cool a few degrees from Wednesday to Thursday and Friday, but the cooler weather and more clouds come Saturday into Sunday, and then a little bit warmer as we head towards Monday into Tuesday. Over the inland areas, that works the same direction as we cool down Saturday and Sunday and into Monday, and then start to warm up a little little bit on Tuesday. Overnight lows right near 50 degrees. More news coming up. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Don't go away. This is Central Coast News. Now in high definition. Hey, what are you guys up to? School project. We're learning about redwood forest. Did you know that redwood is a renewable resource? And it's actually great for the environment because it stores carbon. And it's great for building things because it's so strong. You mean things like a tree house? When you want to build things that last, count on the Home Depot to have what you need. Like naturally strong Mendocino Redwood with one-of-a-kind beauty. Best project ever, Dad. My Chevrolet, my Chevrolet. When you need a car, truck, say my Chevrolet. In our Salinas Valley, the best two words to say. When you need a car, truck, say, my Chevrolet. Huge savings continue on all cars, trucks, and SUVs at the Central Coast's number one Chevy dealer, my Chevrolet. My Chevrolet. In the Salinas Auto Mall, Chevy, find new roads. Hi, I'm Marty, General Manager of Kasner Exterminating Incorporated. 
For over 30 years, Kasner has been providing our local communities with a cost-effective, environmentally friendly, and convenient alternative to fumigation with our time-tested Electrogun system. No moving out, no damage to vegetation, no exposure to harmful chemicals, and safe around children and pets. Call today for your free, limited inspection and join the thousands of satisfied customers who have let our experienced employees save them from costly wood repair. Remember, we are the best at what we do. Only Toyota has what it takes to go the distance. Only Toyota has the longest lasting vehicles of any full line automaker. Only Toyota has the smartest value on the road. Only Highlander is rated best overall value of the year. And only Toyota lets you save big on RAV4 with 0% APR for 60 months or make no payments for 90 days on the redesigned Highlander. Only Toyota. Only Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. Wake Up Weather with Dan Sianka. Welcome back to Central Coast News. Take a look at this damage from twin tornadoes that ripped through Pilger, Nebraska. Two people were killed and 19 others were injured. One of the people killed was a five-year-old girl. A tornado hit the trailer she was in. The powerful twister stayed on the ground for nearly an hour, picking up and tossing cars and blowing homes to pieces. So we were in a little corner of the basement and it, the house just lifted right off the top of us. 75% of the homes in the small town were destroyed. Nebraska's governor declared a state of emergency and toured the area today. Just incredible damage. Now to this developing story. One of the suspected ringleaders of that deadly attack on the U.S. mission in Benghazi now in U.S. custody. It's the first time the U.S. has captured any of the alleged perpetrators of the 2012 attack that killed four Americans and set off that political firestorm. Yeah, on September 11, 2012, militants attacked the U.S. mission in Benghazi, killed Killing Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans. The Pentagon says the suspect, Ahmed Abu Katala, is a senior leader of the terror group Ansar al Sharia. Special ops captured him during a planned raid on Sunday. He is in U.S. custody in a secure location outside Libya, um, and uh, that's as far as I'm going to go. Katala is expected to be tried at the U.S. District Court in Washington. Right now, he faces three criminal counts and more could be added. However, he will first be interrogated to see what information he may have. Sunni militants are still winning new territory and threatening U.S. facilities in and around Baghdad. That's prompted President Obama to step up U.S. security for American personnel. The president gave Congress notice that 275 troops are going in to protect U.S. personnel and the American embassy. He's also looking at deploying a special forces team to train Iraqis. And drone strikes are still a possibility against ISIS, the Sunni militants. Group. The president must quickly provide us with a strategy and a plan that address the threat posed by the insurgency. Former U.S. Ambassador to Iraq Ryan Crocker told CBS this morning the administration should also step up its diplomatic game. He said the focus should be helping the Shiite-led Iraqi government bridge this Shiite-Sunni divide. Israeli troops have widened their crackdown on Palestinian militants as they search for three Israeli teenagers missing since last week. Israel says the Palestinian Islamist group Hamas kidnapped the three teens. In response, Israeli troops raided homes in the biggest West Bank crackdown on Hamas in years. The Israeli military says it has arrested more than 200 suspected Hamas activists, including members of the Palestinian parliament. Hamas has not claimed responsibility for abducting the teenagers, but said the kidnappings are a justified response to Israel's imprisonment of Palestinians. Farming has never been a job for the faint of heart. There are long days and, of course, those early hours. But now a new wave of high-tech gadgets is finally giving farmers a break. Introducing the robotic dairy. <laughs> there it goes. Beep, beep. At this farm in Wisconsin, a fleet of robots do the dirty work. There's even a robot that delivers feed straight to the hungry herd. Farm automation, already popular in Europe, has started to catch on in the U.S. and it helps cut down on labor costs. It allows us to do things that we couldn't do otherwise. We want our cows to do what they want to do when they want to do it, not in our schedule, but in the cow's schedule. So when they're ready, these cows know to line up and wait their turn at a robotic milker. Dairy farmers say the happier the cow, the better tasting the milk. Where was this shot? Pretty sure that was a picture of Aaron Rodgers on that robot floating across the floor there. Maybe <laughs> those are the Wisconsin farms yeah. or something. 
Troublemakers, yeah, exactly. Deceptive weight loss ads are everywhere, and Congress is calling on one famous TV doctor to be part of the solution. Plus, how could you be featured in a TV commercial and what you're going to have to do? Sign up for breaking news alerts at KIONrightnow.com. From the moment you find out you're pregnant to the day your baby arrives, Hazel Hawkins Memorial Hospital's new Women's Health Care Center is here for you. Beautiful labor and delivery suites, each filled with hotel-like amenities. Be confident our highly trained doctors and nurses are here to ensure you have the best delivery experience possible. Hazel Hawkins Hospital's new Women's Health Care Center, providing every woman with the excellent care she deserves. You have plenty of small SUVs to choose from out there. So what makes Ford Escape the right choice? The power and performance of an available EcoBoost engine. Help when your hands are full. Confidence and control in any season. Available voice-activated sync technology. Plus an offer too good to pass up. Make Escape your choice now and get up to $2,000 cash back or lease one for just $1.99 per month. Exclusively at your California Ford dealer. I'm M-A-R-Y, and I have COPD. I'm J-E-F-F, -F, and I have COPD. I'm L-I-S-A, and I have COPD. But I don't want my breathing problems to get in the way of hosting my book club. That's why I asked my doctor about B-R-E-O. Once daily, Brio Ellipta helps increase airflow from the lungs for a full 24 hours. And Brio helps reduce symptom flare-ups that last several days and require oral steroids, antibiotics, or hospital stay. Brio is not for asthma. Brio contains a type of medicine that increases risk of death in people with asthma. It is not known if this risk is increased in COPD. Brio won't replace rescue inhalers for sudden COPD symptoms and should not be used more than once a day. Brio may increase your risk of pneumonia, thrush, osteoporosis, and some eye problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking Brio. Ask your doctor about BREO for COPD. First prescription free at mybrio.com. We always ask on every story, is it right, is it fair, is it honest? That's when we know we can report the facts. The CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. Another good day for stocks. The Dow added 27 points while the Nasdaq gained 16. All right, so deceptive advertisements, a promise to help you lose weight, are everywhere. Yeah, some lawmakers in Washington are tired of it, and they held a hearing today. Now, at that hearing, some lawmakers called out Dr. Mehmet Oz from the popular TV show, saying he's part of the problem. Well, Sensa and Pure Green Coffee have been fined by the Federal Trade Commission for these false ad claims. Dr. Oz says companies like Pure Green Coffee often use clips from his show without his permission. I should have been savvy enough to say to myself, and I kick myself still, maybe I'll do it in the future, that I should just say, here are the companies I trust. Just go buy their products because they're not going to scam you. They're not going to make illegal claims. Dr. Oz told the Senate subcommittee he'll be part of the solution from now on. He maintains that he has never endorsed specific brands, nor has he received money for the sale of any of these supplements. Well, good to know because you fall for that kind of stuff yeah. easy. The Federal Reserve held the first of its two-day po two -day policy meeting to discuss the U.S. economy. The consensus on Wall Street is officials will keep a key short-term interest rate near zero and now begin raising it for another year. The board will also update its economic forecast for the rest of the year. So if you've always wanted to be on TV, now's your chance. Staples is looking for people, yeah. not you, Norm. Yeah. Looking for, well, maybe if you can dance, listen, yeah. to be in this new back-to-school commercial. Yeah, never wanted to be on TV, never really had the interest. No. You have to do the shopping cart dance. Staples is using this video's inspiration. Here it is, look at that guy. Anyone of any age could participate. Just make a video that's no longer than one minute of you doing the shopping cart dance. Winners will be featured in the actual national commercial and could win back-to-school gift cards. To find out how you can apply for this dance party, visit our website, KIONrightnow.com. We have a link that's posted right on our homepage. I can see people getting their business or their work group to do it together. Yeah. So. Hey. A lot of folks on the Central Coast doing it. Let's do look it. into it. We're back at 6. We'll see you then.